Hello everyone, bringing you another unboxing video today and this is looking at some bits and pieces very kindly sent to me by a chap called Jack McCabe who not only served in the British Army but also during the 1980s served with the Sultan of Amman's armed forces in the 2nd Signal Regiment although he spent most of his time with the Armoured Regiment of the SOAF. So this will be a mix of British and uh, SOAF kit. It would be very interesting to have a look through. I do have a list of what's arriving but nevertheless it will be very interesting to dig through this stuff. I know some of what's arriving is SOAF DPM which has always interested me. It's a very interesting print. British DPM but in very different colours as we'll see and I'm very keen to have a look at what's arrived uh, other than that as well. So thank you very much for this Jack and we'll we'll have a look at what's arrived now. Okay so this, this is the big box that arrived and it handily, under the tape, it handily has a lid. I've just been able to undo the tape and I can now remove the lid for the first time. Pop that out of the way up there. And what we have in here is a selection of various bits and pieces of British and uh, Oman or Omani origin. Um, Jack explained to me that in the 80s he went over and actually got a job with, as a civilian working with the uh, Sultan of Oman's armed forces. Uh, it was seconded to one of their armoured regiments. So we have in here a selection of British and Amani issue or Oman issue kit. So in here we have a selection. So in here we have a selection of both British and Oman issue items. And we'll get into that now. So we have, starting at the top here, um, several pairs of khaki socks. My assumption would be that they're British given they're, they're labelled in English. So several pairs of those. And then we have a set of 80s green um, 80s issue or 70s 80s issue British socks there. A pair of those. And then a couple of shirts which are uh, size 39 and size 40 and these are the khaki shirt worn with number two dress and these would be mid well these are 80s contract dates so rather nice to have those both in, in obviously un unworn condition and some very interesting bits and pieces turning up in here we'll go back to this side of the box we have a, a khaki a, a tan version a khaki version of the the british woolly pulley but this i'm just in the label here so the label has size 5 there, which I assume these are made along British sizing lines. But as you can see, the label is in Arabic. So that would be an Amman issue uh, woolly pulley, which is a, a lovely thing. It, these are unusual to find, uh, manufactured for any country. Um, they were, they're were they quite a, a rare thing to find, this, these tan uh, versions of the woolly pulley. So that's a rather nice thing to have. Thank you very much, Jack. This is all extremely generous of you as say it's very very kind of people to send things like this and this is a fascinating uh, collection of stuff in here so this here if we oh, we've got trousers as well so this looks like the, the trousers and shirt we lay these out here let's see some of the details and if we unfold this here We have the shirt and the trousers in Oman's DPM print, which is based on the, the four-colour desert DPM, which had initially been intended for British use and wasn't pursued. So you end up with this very interesting muted, slightly muted DPM, obviously where the, the greens faded almost to this very uh, greyish pale green. We've got tan and then this very reddy orange colour uh, and then the black. So these are something I've come across before but we never had a set of uh, the label in the collar there I'll bring that into the camera just the tag there and there was a patch on the arm we have that there I'll show you in detail so these are fantastic another great example of another country making use of DPM and uh, as I say I've, I've come across these before but never actually picked up a set so that's fantastic thank you for those Jack that's brilliant okay well another pair of the socks in the corner there so I'll just put those to one side as well there we go another pair of those and then we have a pair of interesting uh, desert boots you see these for sale occasionally they are almost with the seams here are a little different but they're basically a sort of suede version of the DMS boot the treads a bit different the vibrant tread on there 
um, but they're they're very similar and obviously with the toe cap and everything um, so any sizing or anything on these no still with where these have been worn last but still with some bits of uh, gravel a bit in the tread so a pair of those very interesting those to one side as well and then we have a stable belt which has obviously it's in British style but with the uh, that wrong way up there there we go yeah sorry I'm doing it the wrong way around uh, with the belt buckle with the the insignia of the um, army of Amman on the the royal is it the royal Amman army I can't remember now off the top of my head but anyway uh, the royal army of Amman but yes uh, there in the insignia on the uh, the belt buckle there Thankfully, uh, Jack did uh, inform me of, of what these bits and pieces here are. Um, these two epaulettes are obviously on green and, and tan respectively for the, the armoured regiment with the black backing. Obviously black, a, a typical armoured unit colour, uh, taking the British influence into account um, with the, the device on the, the shoulder here. And then I believe these are the, the signals um, regiment that he was, uh, that he operated with. Um, so that's the, the, the ones we just looked at, the Armoured Regiment, and these are the Signals Regiment. So, uh, yeah, uh, epaulettes. And then, obviously, uh, a Royal Signals cap badge, the backing plate and everything. Up there. And a cap badge, I think, if I remember correctly, Jack said this was from the, the, armored, the armored Regiment. Again, has the similar device in the centre there, as you can see. And then a couple more British bits on this side. We have a couple of uh, KF shirts, the khaki final shirts. Well, green by this point, of course. These are actually a, a wool mix by this point. In the, but very nice condition, these. Barely worn, if worn at all. Size 2. So 80s issue wool shirts there, or wool mix, as I say. And another one of those. Again, in a size 2. Again, both in... in pretty much unworn condition I would say looking at these fantastic thank you for those Jack as well and then on this side we have a couple more a pair of trousers I recognize these so we've got a pair of trousers there and a shirt there any label in these let's have a look so oh, okay so shirt khaki stone color size L4 um, so I'm assuming these are. I don't know. I don't recognise these as British issue, uh, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But anyway, turn those in as well. So thank you for that, Jack. Um, I'll just check the list actually he sent because he may have, may have mentioned. So yeah, these are a, a Marn issue, the shirt and trousers. Um, so labelled in in English. So maybe that's not a definite guarantee on the socks that they are British issue, uh, but labelled in English. So they're a Marn issue and trousers still in the packaging and then we have well I'll be careful with this because it has details on current but I'll, I'll block it out anyway um, we have the uh, reserve uh, papers here so instructions of a territorial army and reservist instruction book and then we have um, the letter at the top here uh, so I'll have a look at these in more detail uh, in a little bit because I don't want to uh, just check on the uh, Check on the address there, make sure it's not current and so forth. But uh, yeah, 1990 dated. You can see in the, the corner there. Um, so yes, pass those on. Uh, no longer required, of course. Jack is now, as he said, uh, beyond the uh, the age where he'd be called up again. But uh, that's the that's everything in here. I'll just double check. So there we are. Hope you found it interesting looking through those bits and pieces. Okay, so since I made the first part of this video, another box has arrived from Jack. Uh, very kindly sent me another batch of bits and pieces. Uh, again, a similar mix of British and uh, SOAF kit. So we're going to have a look at what's arrived in this box. I'll just push this up out of the way and get bits out of it bit by bit. I think that's going to be by far the best way of doing things. If I can do so. There we go. Right. Okay, so I have ah, I have a list on top here, which is going to be useful um, going forward. Uh, let's have a look at what we have here. So we've got... Oh, a a poster so 
a, uh, a poster for a production at the Salala, Salala, I'm assuming, Theatre Club. Um, so that's interesting. December 98 at the SOF Airborne Cinema, next to the SAF shop. So there we are. That's rather interesting. Thank you for that, Jack. I will hopefully, not too distant future, have somewhere I can put that up. Um, let's have a look in here. Okay, so oh, let's get it over here and bring something into to shot if we can. Okay, so first thing we have here is a British combat smock. You can see it's smock combat. Details of the label there, size two. Very nice condition. I believe this, this looks like a late production 1968 pattern. So this will be just prior to the, uh, the 1984 pattern coming out. Uh, obviously we still have the, the patch pockets without the bellows, but made in this darker darker print, well, the different material, uh, cotton modal mix, and you end up with this, this darker color compared to early production 1968 pattern. So that's in lovely condition. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you very much for that, Jack. That's fantastic. Okay, so we've got some more SOAF DPM. More of this uh, orange DPM or red DPM as it's sometimes called. So we have a another shirt, another shirt there, as you can see, and just leave that folded for the minute. And another pair of the trousers here. And I didn't actually unfold these fully last time, so you do have a a leg pocket there and a leg pocket there. Not a direct copy of British practice because you don't have a dressing pocket. American style buttons. Um, so in that uh, very interesting sort of pale uh, red, green, well, so greyish green and, and sand DPM, obviously with the black overprint, which is fairly standard, but the, the, the base colours are quite different from, from British DPM, and I, I really like it from that point of view. Uh, I'll try and let's have a look at that. So we've got the... Yes, so I've got to pull over the list. I think I'm just going to pull these bits out as I as I can reach them and as I find them. So we've got a oh a shirt man's if it will focus there. Shirt man's shirt man's soldiers. Come on, Simon, I can't talk. Shirt man's soldiers number two dress. Have an early eighties contract number there, and that has. Staff Sergeant's insignia on the arm there, as you can see. Rather nice. Oh, in the camera. And then another example. Again, with Staff Sergeant's oh, the labels washed out on that one. But nevertheless, we can see the, the Staff Sergeant's rank on the arm there. And then, reach a bit further in here, we have a British wool shirt. And this is a Obviously, we've moved move away from the green, so this is a possibly a 50s example. Yep, 1954, size two. That's a, a very nice thing. They're much nicer than the later green ones. It's actually a, a pure wool, as opposed to the wool mix, uh, wool nylon mix, I think, that's used later on. And again, Staff Sergeant's uh, outline rank on there. It's interesting the way the crown is formed, just from a piece of, sort of a pentagonal piece of uh, white cloth there. But uh, very nice example that, lovely. Another piece of SOAF DPM in here, and this is the combat smock, I believe. So, yeah, you can just see underneath the tag here, combat smock DPM. So that's rather nice, still in the packaging. Again, in this, I really do like the uh, the red. SOAF DPM print, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, so that'll be interesting to have a look at. Looks like it's made something similar to British 1968 pattern. So that might be an interesting comparison in the future. I think this is that's at least partially open at the bottom, so I, I probably can get that out without damaging the packaging um, and slide it back in, fold it and slide it back in when I want to. But uh, that's, that's a, a lovely thing as well. Thank you very much again, Jack. Right. A ah. Another of the uh, Shamars in the, 
the matching colours for the DPM. So in a, in a lot, the same pale green and reddish, with almost an ochre colour, isn't it? That, but uh, one of those. Ah, <laughs> hood, the DPM combats. I mention that. The label in there again, size one example. There we go. Please forgive me knocking the camera. So we have a ah, UN, well used UN beret. That's uh, the, the obviously the UN UN badge and everything there. It's interesting that that seems to be directly opposite the, very much on the side of the beret, directly opposite the uh, ventilation holes. But um, sit, oh, there is a size still, six and seven eighths. You can see there. Thank you very much for that, Jack, as well. That'd be very useful going forward. It's good to have a UN, UN beret. I don't actually have one of those as of yet, so that's a nice thing to have. Ah, now, I will have to refer to the list here. A British-made beret, but in a very distinctive colour, this sort of light, well, it's not a sky blue, obviously, that's the, more akin to the UN beret, but a light blue compared to, to British use. A British beret, Basque Limited, size 7. And this is... A, a SOAF, so Sutton Command's Armed Forces Signals Regiment beret, but with the Armoured Regiment cap badge, uh, and that obviously fits with with Jack's service. So um, that's an interesting one. Obviously, nice We've got the black backing, as you can see there, to the badge, which is typical Armoured Corps colours, at least those uh, drawing inspiration from from British practice. I'm going to have to focus there. Okay, so ah, an ever useful piece of scrim. Sort of worn and faded scrim like this looks a lot better than using modern stuff, so that's nice to have. Thank you very much, Jack. That'll look uh, good when dressing up mannequins in the future. And then some more bits and pieces we have here. Uh, we have a combat cap. Rather nice. You can see the early DPM with the bleed through. Peaks a bit crushed, but that's nevertheless a nice example and oh a cracking stamp in there that survived very well so seven and one eighth which is a good size for these and then a 70s i believe to be a 70s contract number so that's great that's a really nice example with the the clear stamp in there like that that's that's fantastic really nice thing well i say that not popular in use obviously but uh, they in decent sizes they don't uh, turn up very often so it's very nice to have one in a decent size with a nice clear stamp like that and then a rabbit shield so oops, I mess up here I'm still wrapped in the paper I can slide this out without okay so, ah, second signal regiments so that's the the SOAF unit mentioned previously we'll just focus it there very interesting design Ooh, reflecting the light off there, Cameron didn't like that. I'll slide this back in the paper now if I can. Just let me keep all these bits together. Keep all of these bits together in one place, and the berry and so forth all together. Um, <clears throat> I'm running out of what I can reach from here, being right over. Ah, so a liner for the combat smock, which we can see here. Get the label into shot so we can see what it is. Liner combat smock size two, and this is the, the sleeveless type, uh, not the extreme cold weather liner. And that has again an early, well, a relatively early, mid 80s actually contract number, but uh, obviously quite a useful bit of kit. I, I think I have one of these, but I, I could be wrong on that. But um, yeah, the basic uh, liner for the uh, the combat smock, the padded, the mouse suit, as these were known. Obviously, the uh, sort of blanket stitched nylon with uh, with padding in to give some insulation. Uh, another another wool shirt. It's another green example of the later green type. And um, we have again size two here. So this is a worn example. A couple of those in the previous box. But thank you for that, Jake. The, these are always uh, useful to have. 
We've got a single putty there. I'll just go rummaging and see if I can find the other one because it should be in here. There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. A pair of putties. Again, very useful thing to have. Thank you for those, Jack. That's excellent. Put those to one side as a, a quite a neat pair though. So I'll keep those. Uh, I do have a using pair, so there'll be another set of uh, decent ones to keep as such. And another couple of pairs, another three pairs of 80s, 80s issue socks. So, again, a useful thing to have. And I think that's the majority of clothing items. Oh, no, there's also another item. I'll just put that to one side so I can reach the other bits as well. So, um, now this is, pop this in place, uh, da -da 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 -da, down the list. British Army Training Unit, Suffield, Canada, Ice Bucket of all things um so you can see under the uh, just under the uh, the ropes on the drum there and it is a, a little ice bucket if you can keeping a bottle cold so that's a an interesting little thing it'll go on a shelf somewhere and put off to one side here got that the right way up uh, the signal regiment stable belt you can see the the, the same emblem we had on the shield mirrored on the belt, belt buckle there, as you can see. So, um, so yeah. So thank you very much indeed for that, Jack. That uh, is two quite considerable lots of uh, kit uh, from Jack there. Thank you very much indeed for sending these over. It's incredibly kind of you, and it's been fascinating going through these bits and pieces and a superb addition to the collection. So once again, a massive thank you, Jack, for sending all this kit over to me. Very, very interesting to look through and very useful, some of the bits and pieces. Very interesting, particularly, as I said earlier, the DPM. Uh, that's of particular interest to me. And I'll be very, uh, I'm very much looking forward to having a, a more detailed look at that. And some of the insignia and so forth as well. Very interesting. I'll definitely be keeping all of that together, uh, obviously, with the services you've provided and, and so on, uh, to keep that together as one little lot. So thank you very much indeed for sending all of this once again. If you've enjoyed looking through these bits and pieces of which have arrived and you'd like to see more from the channel going forward and perhaps some of these bits and pieces looked at in more detail, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below, which will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. I greatly appreciate it, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. And if you'd like to make contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.